Hey, this is Daniel, and um, the day has come, the time has come to release the spider that has been in so many of my recent posts out back into the wild so that she can continue her life in a place that is more natural to her than in my kitchen. So, in a recent trip out to the Chihuahuan Desert out in southwest Texas, in the Big Bend region, a stowaway by the name of Oleos Giganteus, or the giant crab spider, also known as a golden huntsman, found its way into my car and uh, managed to ride somewhere up in the dashboard area uh, near the visors for about at least two days. I discovered her one afternoon on the way home um, and uh, she crawled out from behind the visor. And if you saw that video that I, where I started, the, started filming right after I discovered her, you can kind of see I was a little bit worried. Uh, hey, this is Daniel, and um, uh, potentially a really bad thing is going on in my car right now. I am just coming home and have spent the last couple days out in the desert and uh, put my visor down. This is after driving all the way home, and this guy just popped out of my visor. I really cannot identify this spider the species. I, I don't know. It looks a bit like a tarantula. It's hairy all over. It's big as, as heck. There's my finger compared to him. He's huge. And right over my leg. Right over my leg. Uh, he honestly, he, he looks a little bit like a, maybe an Australian wandering spider, but to see the legs of that thing crawl up from behind a visor that you just had your hand on, that's a little frightening to me. And he could have dropped on me at any second. I'm basically kind of freaked out right now, considering how big he really is. Does that bring it into perspective for you? Now, I, spiders don't normally scare me. In fact, I actually adore spiders. I love them. And I've been around some big ones. I've held tarantulas and all kinds of fun things, and even some of the more dangerous spiders around. But, um, but there's something about a, a giant crab spider that just kind of gets me right here in the upper chestal, throatal area. Ugh. So, uh, and I do. I love them. They're cool. They're great. Uh, she's been in. She's been in, in good care. But it's time to release her. Take a look at her one more time. Let's just take a look at this giant wonder of nature. There she is. She spun some webs inside there. Her webs are stronger than steel. They're very fine, strong silk. And you can see, look at look at my hand underneath her. Can you see by her, her, her leg span all the way across is about three inches. See those giant black mandibles? At the end of those are some formidable and quite long, very sharp overlapping fangs. I say overlapping because they crisscross underneath. When she bites, she brings them straight out parallel, sinks them in, and they cross inside your flesh. Oh. Now, I've been bitten by bigger spiders than this, but there's just something about the way the crab spider bites when they do. The way that they grab on with their body, with their legs out sideways uh, in an arcing fashion facing you that just... The next time you see those mandibles and those fangs, <laughs> there will not be glass between her and my hand. She's been very docile, very friendly so far, but she hasn't eaten in a long time. <laughs> it's a hungry three inch leg span spider, and I'll be handling her with my bare hands before this video is over. Sometimes you just don't ask people why they do what they do. Oh, one last thing. There is a Charlotte here. Just want you to know, there's a giant orb spider right there. I ran into her web this morning. She could eat Charlotte for lunch. What is it with me and spiders? I don't know. Let's let her go now. I am now back in the woods in somewhere, Texas, and I'm on my way with this uh, beautiful spider to let her go, release her back into the wild back here at a spot that I've been to before I think is going to closely resemble the place that she would call home. It actually will give her a bit more diversity as a matter of fact. Uh, there's a local water source, there's also a lot of rock, tons of rock, cave area, lots of trees and shade and everything else. So I think I've got the perfect spot. Uh, I'm here alone. I do not want to get bit out here alone in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so I'm going to try not to. It's a little hot today, I would say, uh, beat and sweat, but um, it's a good time to let her go. Friday afternoon and I've had her long enough and like I said I think that uh, I'm about at the place now 
where I think I could let her uh, call herself home. Turns out that she's in the family of spiders that is of the top two largest spiders ever found in the, in the world. One of the very largest is the Goliath bird-eating spider. It's a member of the tarantula family. And then, of course, you've got the giant huntsman, which is uh, more of a, a, a true spider, in a sense. And, and uh, it's been noted or recorded that there has been a huntsman similar to her found with a leg span that actually was longer than the largest uh, known bird-eating goliath tarantula ever found on Earth. So, yeah, supposedly they're in a neck-and-neck -neck race as to which is the largest spider on planet Earth. Now, her venom uh, is, uh, she does have venom, she is poisonous. People have asked me, um, hey, is she poisonous? Well, yes, she is. She's a spider. She's got venom. And she could kill something quite readily with her, with her venom, and the mechanics of her fangs alone are enough to kill most critters. Um, she's actually uh, powerful enough to eat um, salamanders and small lizards and things like that. Um, that's why I'm not releasing them anywhere near my home because we have lots of little uh, geckos that uh, live around my house and she eats geckos as well and I don't want to have our gecko population suddenly dive because they are our outside house warriors. It's warm. Let me head over here to some shade. A moment ago I was filming another take of this uh, and I actually filmed her move. I'll, I'll put that here now. Some folks have asked me, have you, uh, has she moved? Yeah, she, she's moved. She's just not moving now. But when I let her go, she's going to move. Now I'm hoping that she'll get on my hands and, uh, and I will be safe and not be bit. I don't want to be bit like I said in the back of the middle of nowhere. So let's head on to her spot and let this, uh, let this girl have her freedom. All right. All right, hey, this is Daniel, and it is it is time to, to set the spiders free. It's time. Okay, there's one spider. Uh, but in scoping around this area, I did notice another spider web up in a tree here. And um, so other, other signs of spider life around here, that's good. That means that there is an established environment in this area. I don't know if you can hear in the background, 50, 60 feet away is a little little bit of a shoreline to a body of water. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie and tell you I'm not nervous about doing this. Um, spiders don't normally make me nervous. I actually love spiders and I think they're awesome. I don't know what it is about this uh, little little Miss uh, Charlotte here that just it's just kind of gotten under my skin, and so I, I don't know. I'm a little bit nervous about this. I, okay, so as far as protection goes, I'm wearing long sleeves, long sleeve pants. I've actually tucked a couple of rubber bands here underneath my sleeves so that she cannot climb up my sleeves because that's a perfect way to get bit is to crush a spider between clothing and your, your hairy chest. Um, so uh, the time has come. All right. Okay, here we go. Let's just let's just go ahead and open this up carefully. And there she is. She's already started moving. She smells her freedom. She's already started moving. Okay. And I want to acclimate her to a little agitation first. So uh, I want to start just by, let me use a smaller stick for right now, and I just want to gently see what she wants to do here. Oh, okay, so we're, we're on the move immediately. Okay, now, can you see why I'm a little nervous here? Yeah, can you see why I'm a little bit nervous? And I think here's the moment of truth about to happen. I'm gonna let her walk up on me here. Uh, I think my stomach is growling. It's not because I'm hungry. But the slightest little touch, and she more or less kind of freaks out. And I do not want to get bit. Oh my. All right, so she's jumped off of there. And off she kind of goes here. She's a quick girl. She's a quick one. Wish I had a GoPro on my head. I don't see that she 
is really being aggressive or anything. And she's taken off into the woods. Okay, I've got her back on here. She's spinning a lot of webs. A lot of webs, all right. There we go. All right. Woo! It's not so bad. She's on me. She's sitting on my bracelet. She knows I'm hot. She's probably hot too. Uh, and there she is. Yeah. There she is. Let's see if I can grab my camera. You can see my heart beating in my fingertips. I'm going to grab my camera here and I'm going to see if I can get a close-up view of her hanging out on me here. Let's see if I can do this without without stopping my camera. Lord have mercy. I'm still recording. All right, here we go. I think that ought to... There you go. <laughs> oh, can I even see? Can I even see this? There we go. Oh, man. Let's get her into the shadow here. Actually, a little bit so you can kind of get a good view of her on me here. There you go. That's a big girl. Holy cow. I was dreading this moment so much. <laughs> oh. There you go. <clears throat> so I might be asking myself right now, what was I dreading? Look at her spinning silk all over me. It's strong as steel. It's stronger than steel. It's very, very thin, very, very thin thread here. And uh, yeah, she's She's very delicate. She's just walking around me. I can barely feel her. I can barely feel, feel her at all. Just kind of come over here to the shade just a little bit. Get some of that contrast of that sun out of the way. There you go. Woo! There's my girl. All right. I hear a Tom Petty song in the background. Here comes my girl with her fangs. She's got her legs out there. This is a crab spider. And like I said, these guys are are uh, in the family of some of the largest spiders on Earth. Look at her legs out. Uh, always nice to know you got a, a giant poisonous spider on you. Uh, and she's crawling up my arm now. Oh, spun that web, and and uh, it's here she goes. So let's get her up on this stick here. Yeah. So let's see. She's right up under here. Yeah. I think she's going to be doing well. Woo! She's fast. <laughs> She's super fast. You know what? I think she found her home. Okay. I think I'm gonna sit down here next to her where she went. There's the water, by the way. So you see what I'm saying? Uh, but look, I think she found her home. I think she found her home. She ran right up in there. That's perfect. That's just perfect. And look, there's a little little spider right there running around. See it? So this is a spider. This is a place where spiders exist. And uh, let me stand up here. Man, that's beautiful. Ha! Woo! Some of this sweat is from the heat. Just some of it. Mm -mm -mm. That was freaking awesome. All right, that's the stuff I live for. Anyway, so man, that is perfect. Look at her environment here. So we started out there. Here's mine. My tripod and uh, her little, uh, what used to be her home there. See some of the webs in there, little bits of web. And then she ran right up in here. And uh, yeah, that's, that's perfect. I couldn't think of a better place. Yeah, that's it. All right, we've let her go. <laughs> uh, it's magnificent, absolutely magnificent. So, in case you're wondering what her environment looks like, I just want to quick show you here a quick view. There we go. I mean, her front porch is, is this gorgeous uh, body of water. It's a beautiful little spot there she can call home. All right, well, this is Daniel G. Bennis, and uh, I appreciate you hanging out with me over the last few days. Uh, this has been quite something, so a spider that hitched a ride from the Chihuahuan Desert of Southwest Texas um, all the way back here to our home and into my car and out from the visor. By the way, I, I heard a story this morning that uh, in looking up some research before I handled her, wanted to kind of learn what the venom would do if I got bit so I'd have something to kind of be, be careful with because I have 
I'd say about a mile hike back to my car. In doing the research, I, I learned that, that she was in a list of top 10 most dangerous spiders on earth. But not because of her venom, but because of the way that they like to stow away inside people's vehicles and drop down onto their bodies from their visors. True. 68 year old man drove his car into a lake because one of these guys jumped, uh, dropped down into his lap from behind the visor. I don't react that way. Years and years of training when something weird happens, I freeze, I assess the situation. I don't just run off screaming about something. I, I, I stand and I face what it is that's looking at me and I figure out what to do next and I, I handle it in an orderly fashion. I've done that my whole life, and which is probably why, I've, why I do things like this. It's just to keep my, myself up, keep my training up. I don't know, maybe it's just a crazy thing. Crazy uh, nature fetish, who knows? But I just I love nature, I adore it, and uh, and being able to let her go, fantastic. Uh, I hope if you find uh, spiders, I hope that uh, you see something like this. Your first reaction is not to kill them; they don't deserve it. They're they're a wonderful part of our ecosystem. They have every right to be on this planet as you do, and you owe your sanity to them when they kill a lot of the critters that can come into your house and cause you more havoc. And you can see she was all the way on me, even crouched down and never even exhibited one bit of, of um, aggression towards me so ah uh, wonderful very cool beautiful spider we're gonna let her go now she's in her home I wish you well farewell to you I'm gonna pack up and uh, we're gonna head home thank you for for joining me today uh, God bless and um, keep enjoying the nature around you it's awesome Hey, this is Daniel, and uh, potentially a really bad thing is happening in my car right now. This guy sure as hell would not want to get bit by one of those. He's furry. Oh my god. Right over my. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, this is Daniel. Testing, testing. Hey, this is Daniel, and I am um, this, uh, this, uh, back in a, uh, uh we'll, uh, We'll let her have some, uh, to, to, uh, oh, there she is moving. First time. Is she going to move for us? There you go. Because I think I've had someone say, I haven't seen her move yet. Now you have. And so, yep, we're going to go let her go. When I say we're, I mean me, because I'm alone. And let her go. Let her, uh, have her release. What? Test, test, test. Can you see this? Is it okay? Straighten that up just a little bit. Like so. There we go. Darn it. All right, hey, this is Daniel and it's... Uh... All right. Ah, stupid glasses. Time to uh, release the arachnid. What the heck? All right, hey, this is Dan, and I, I, I really want to make sure. I'm just going to come over and make sure that my camera is recording because I have one shot at this. She may bolt and take off, and I'll never even see her again. But uh, just in case, just checking. Want to check? Want to check? You would too. I'm a dingleberry. Who let the spider out? Mm, 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 mm. Who let the spiders out? We shouldn't do that. No telling what lives in there. All right, stop it. Her little uh, silky steel, harder, harder than steel proteins all over me. So she gave me the protein shake. That didn't sound right. Take two.